am Kenny Kramer, known as The Real Kramer, here in New York City. Here he is, the man, the myth, the legend. Give it up for Kenny Kramer, everybody. I first met Larry when we moved into the same building at about the same time. Fourth floor, and even on the fourth floor, and, and um, I used to. It's a building that was federally subsidized for performing artists. And the management of the building asked me if I would put together a show using all these entertainers living in the building, and I did it. And uh, they gave me a list of all the comedians, and everyone I asked to be part of the show was thrilled to do it until I got to Larry David, who said, No way, I can't do it. Good, good, good. And eventually I talked him into doing it, and he was a huge hit, and we became great friends. Well, you know, Larry knows me very, very well, and, and he gave the character a lot of my personality in terms of, you know, golf, entrepreneurism, hot tubs, sex without dating, you know, and, but Michael, of course, added that ingredient of physical comedy to the character, which has nothing to do with me. I walk around like a normal person, you know. People who walk around like Cosmo in real life are a mental institution. <laughs> <laughs> but people come from all over. Michael was cast to play Kramer. He knew it was based on Larry's friend, but he chose not to meet me, not to do any research. He wanted to do his own thing, and thankfully he did, and it worked out okay. Um, Michael and I were friendly. You know, when I go out to California, we'd hang out a little bit. I'd say we're friendly. We're not really friends. I haven't seen him in several years. Um, you know, I supported him through this debacle that, that took place, and. Um, you know, he's a good guy, he's not a racist, he's a good guy, he's just a very inexperienced comedian and didn't know how to deal with a heckler. That was the story. And I was getting hate mail from people, yeah, saying, you know, you're a racist, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they just couldn't quite separate the fact that, like, I'm not, you know, you know, some people is mindless idiots. So slow, very slow through this intersection, please. Let these people get a picture. And the Kramer Reality Tour starts here in this Producers Club Theater where I do an hour of stand-up right on that stage over there. Tell some funny stories about things that happened in real life and how they became episodes. And then Kramart's, my retail store, opens up downstairs and we sell some t-shirts and Seinfeld souvenirs and then we board a luxury coach. Hey, welcome to Kramer's Reality Tour. And I take people to places made famous on the show and tell them a lot of funny stories and show them some video clips and take them to the soup kitchen for soup. And it's about three hours long. Everyone has a great time. We insist upon it. You know, uh, the, the tour lasts this long, 17 years now, sells out every week, and it's all because of great word of mouth. You know, I do no advertising whatsoever. We only get good word of mouth. And the fact that people come on the tour and don't have fun, we kill them. So the word of mouth is always good. I must ask, is there anybody here that objects to this marriage? Be nice, people. Let them, let them speak now so we can all beat the crap out of you. Uh, become ordained as a minister and empowered to perform wedding ceremonies. I'm doing my first one in a couple of weeks, and I'm really looking forward I, to it. I, Derek Eiler, take you, Elizabeth Kelly. Take you, Elizabeth Kelly. To be my wife and partner in life. To be my wife and partner in life. I, Elizabeth Kelly. I, Elizabeth Kelly. Take you, Dirk. Derek Eiler. To be my husband and partner in life. To be my husband and partner in life. To have an host. A couple that saw a story about me doing weddings in the New York newspapers and uh, called me up and asked me if I would officiate their wedding, and I was happy to do it. Man and wife. And now, if we shall all proceed to the bar for a celebratory drink. Thank you all.